Jackie Green. Um, we're going to talk about uh, a Gibson J45 Legend through, uh, this is a Sunrise buffer box. It's kind of like a little preamp. And through this Fishman loud box, the bigger one, <laughs> whatever the bigger one is. I mean, that's pretty much all I, all I use. I should start by saying I do, I play solo, uh, solo acoustic, and I play in a band too. So the trick for me is to, uh, to have a setup that sort of works for both, playing, you know, by myself or playing with a loud rock band. And uh, the amp thing, it needs to be sort of like a bigger, a bigger, louder amp, just so I can even hear myself. Because the, the last thing I want is when I'm playing in the band is to really have to hammer out on the guitar really too, too much. And so I need an amp that, that gives me enough, enough volume. I used to tour with like three or four different acoustic guitars for different sounds and whatnot, but I, I realized that that's just kind of a pain in the neck, and so I needed to find one acoustic guitar that would work for you know all these setups, and um, as it turns out, I've had this, this guitar for a few years now, and it's my favorite sounding acoustic guitar that I have, and I, I really didn't want to bring it on the road because it's... It, it, it was rather expensive, but it sort of was like it was like, oh man, well, it is the best sounding guitar that I have. So, you know, now I just do it. And so I think that, I think that like people who are looking to sort of augment their setups, I think they need to look first at their at their instrument itself. I think like, I mean, because you could sit here all day and have pedals and pedals and and I used to have you know, uh, you know, modeling pedals and whatnot and. You know, it turns out I just spend too much time fiddling with it and less time, you know, worrying about what I'm going to play. And I, and I think that's, you know, ultimately that's that needs to be the sort of like in the forefront of your mind because, I mean, you're there to play music, not to fiddle with knobs. You know what I mean? So, um, so I would say like look at your instrument and make sure you choose an instrument that that you like the sound of. Um, you know, and it's obviously it's very subjective. Like, you know, I like the sound of this is. J45 Legend is what it's called, and um, you know I've had all kinds of other acoustic guitars, but for me this one's this one's the one. So the pickup in it is a Bags. I can't remember the name, but it's the one that it's one of the ones that stick on there, and it has a little volume control here. Um, I generally like in the past I always hated volume controls. I hated any controls at all. I just wanted like a simple, you know, uh, pickup and I just wanted it to sound good and not have to fiddle with it. Um, but there wasn't a, uh, there wasn't because of this bridge, the guy told me that I couldn't put one of those kinds of pickups in there. So I had to put a, a sticky on there and I was really bummed out at first. And, and then I sort of figured out this little setup and, you know, I was like, Oh, it sounds great. You know, these things. So I'm, I'm happy about that. Um, feedback wise, uh, these uh, stick-on pickups, I think, tend to tend to feed back a little bit more. Uh, but I just use if it if it gets to that, I'll use a you know plunger, sound hole plunger, um, and, or I'll turn around and tell the band to play quieter. <laughs> Unless you're carrying like your own sound system and you're carrying everything yourself, which most people aren't, um, you you have a little bit of you know changes that you have to do every night so uh, for me on with this particular setup I'm pretty sure uh, the other thing I should say is I'm pretty sure that tweeter is not working properly in this amp uh, which I like better <laughs> I don't really know why uh, but this one I think might be kind of broken like in a good way uh, for this guitar you can pretty much uh, EQ wise go straight up and, and be okay. A lot of times you get a lot of low end out of, the, out of, out of this particular guitar in this partic particular setup. So sometimes the mids and the, and the lows I'll, I'll crank down a little bit depending on where we are. Um, and also I, you know, I'll take, I'll have that as a monitor. I don't put it behind me, I put it in front of me uh, as it, like next to the vocal wedges. And if it's not enough I can also feed it into the one of the other monitors too. So. Um, I mean that's the that's the main thing with people who play acoustic guitars in, in in rock bands. It's always a struggle to 
to hear yourself. I mean, you're competing with, you know, in my band, drums, electric guitar, bass, organ, you know, so. Right. Um, and like I said, I don't want to have to sit there and just really thrash it out on the guitar because I don't think that sounds good. So I need a rig that I can, you know. I can still play kind of lightly and, right. and have it punch, and be able to hear it, you know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah. Now, you um, play mostly bigger theaters and festivals and stuff now. Yeah. Is there any advice you'd give to players who are playing more in smaller clubs or sort of, you know, different, uh, like you, in both, terms you travel of with your own sound guy? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that, that's a big deal, too. I yeah. mean, if you, if, you know, if you have the same guy every night doing your sound, um, at least, you know, for the front of house, then, you know, you can at least put some faith in, in that, you know, the guy knows your songs, you, you know, and, you know, he can get, he can get it across. But... You know, for for a long time we did it, and so like you're pretty much self-contained in terms of how you want to sound on stage, and I would say, you know, I, I really think it, I I'll say again, I really think it comes down to the instrument and how you play it and how how comfortable you are playing it. I mean, if it if it's a really great instrument, but you're let's say it's the next too big or it's too whatever, don't don't get it. You know, you gotta you gotta want to play the thing. You know what I mean? Um, this has a particularly big neck on it, uh, which I grew to like. I, I, I didn't at first, um, and after having it for a few years, I ended up really, really liking it. Um, I have some others that have smaller necks, which, you know, are okay too, but I, I end up really liking this one. So I would say, you know, if, you're, if there's a particular sound that you, that you want to get, um, you know, you you just have to you have to try different things, but really look at how you play the instrument and and the instrument itself. I think is a big deal. I mean, the pickup, the you know the the stomp boxes used, the amp. I mean, it, it, to me, it's 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 all like it like this is like the beginning of the chain. You know what I mean? Like if this part if this part of the chain doesn't work, then the rest of it's not going to work either. So. I play with, I also play with, you know, I play with a flat pick, and I play with just a thumb pick, and I just play with my fingers. So, like, that's also part of the setup. I had to get it to be appropriate for picking, thumb, uh, you know, finger picking and finger picking with just your fingers. Because actually, most of the time, I, I end up just using my fingers when I'm finger picking and not a thumb pick. So, it sounds pretty good with, with all those things. So... You know, this took me years to figure out. <laughs> yeah.